Hey, what's up everybody? So today we've got this G20 Generation 330i in the garage. And one of the things I'm really interested in taking a look at is how the suspension is set up on this latest generation and how that compares to the F30 generation of 3 Series. Before we put the car up in the air, let's take a look at the distance from the center of the hub to the fender. And oh, I guess uh, this model came with those uh, roundels that automatically uh, uh, face upright. So I guess that's a nice little uh, gimmick. So on this guy, we have a hair under 15 and a half inches. And in the rear, we have a hair over 15 and a quarter inch. One of the things I noticed right off the bat is that there's no sound deadening on the underside of the hood like there is on the F3X generation. So looking at these shock towers, it looks like BMW definitely beefed them up from the F30 generation. Looking at all these uh, stiffening members here, there's a lot more uh, rigidity in this piece. And uh, it looks like they've gone from five bolts holding the top mount to the shock tower to only four. But with the larger amount of encapsulment, um, you probably don't need more bolts. One thing I do notice that's missing is there's no strut brace. So we have these two holes over here that look like they could be used for a strut brace and maybe uh, higher spec trims offer that. Um, but in this base suspension model, uh, I don't see any work versus the F30. There was an additional strut brace that went here all the way to like the edge of the firewall and to the other shock tower. So just like the F30, uh, the a uh, damper piston strut is secured with an 18 millimeter nut and a 6 millimeter counter hold. So the G20's side jack point boxes use the same size pucks as the uh, F30's, but the big issue with the G20 jack points is the side ones are so far apart, 73 inches from end to end or 70 inches from center to center, that a uh, home lift like a quick jack, even the EXT model, won't reach the jack points. Luckily though, the width between the jack points from side to side is only about 60 to 61 inches. So if you have a quick jack EXT and you must have the EXT length, standard length will not work for this. Um, you can place your uh, quick jack skids orthogonal to the length of the car to lift the car that way. So taking a look at the wheel, we have the exact same M14 by 1.25 uh, bolts for the wheel as we did in the F30 generations. However, this bolt circle diameter is different. Um, previously, the bolt pattern was 5 by 120 millimeters, and now with the G20 generation, it's 5 by 112. So you cannot use your F30 wheels on your G20 vehicle. So I have the front wheel knuckle assembly jacked up to uh, its ride height. So from the center of the hub to the fender is roughly 15 and a half inches. And I want you to take a look at how much clearance there is on the G20 between its damper top and the bump stop. Now you can see it's really n nothing at all. And uh, from the very uh, tip of the bump stop, you only have about a half inch of damper travel. And um, to the uh, divot areas where there's a little bit more, you gain about an extra quarter inch, so about three, three quarters of an inch. And uh, this is, this is kind of what you expect from BMW. They've been doing this a long time, using the bump stops as a secondary spring to provide support for the car uh, once it rolls over. So one of the lessons from this is, if you're going to use lowering springs, um, understand that you'll probably be riding on your bump stops all the time with the G20, unless you go to shorter bump stops. So here we're looking at the rear bump stop of the G20, and I've actually got the suspension lowered an additional uh, three quarters of an inch uh, from normal ride height, so that I could better uh, get a measurement here, because um, the bump stop sits up inside the rear top mount cup like that. So um, at normal ride height, which we measured earlier about uh, 15 and a quarter inch from center of hub to the fender, um, this will have one and a quarter inch of damper stroke before bump stop engagement. So here is the G20 top mount next to an F30 top mount and uh, as you can see the G21 is a lot smaller in diameter um, and that's because the shock tower uh, has a smaller opening and hole for it. Um, if we flip them over, both of them, uh, both of them would still use this uh, thrust bearing here. Mine I've taken off because uh, I put them on my camera plates but uh, they both still use the same uh, plastic thrust bearing. And if we look at the, the inside of the uh, 
top mount. So like uh, if you look at this hole here where this uh, metal piece is that the shock uh, piston shaft mounts to, uh, it's encapsulated in rubber just like how it was with the F31. So that is going to absorb and isolate the cabin from a lot of NVH coming from the wheel and knuckle assembly. So here are the springs from the front strut assembly. On the left I have the G20 spring and on the right is the spring that came with my uh, F31 wagon uh, with the M adaptive suspension. And if we zoom in on some of these tags over here, uh, it looks like BMW is once again using a two letter code to identify the springs. And uh, part of me actually wonders if they're just reusing F30 generation springs. It wouldn't surprise me too much since they had a large uh, spring rate range for that generation. Um, and when I took my F30 spring on the right and I placed it on the spring perches of the uh, G20 strut, um, it fit inside there. So, uh, I mean, Obviously you can see there's a length difference between these two springs. I think that's really just because um, the left spring came from the base suspension and the right spring from my F31 was an M adaptive suspension so it was already a little bit lower. So that would be really cool if it turns out that they use the same springs. Um, so we'll have to do some more research and find out in the future. Next, let's have a look at the actual struts themselves. So on the bottom, I have the G20 uh, passive base suspension front strut, and then on top is my uh, F31 uh, M adaptive suspension or EDC strut. Um, these were made by Tenneco Monroe, and I believe also the uh, passive shocks were also made by you know Monroe Tenneco. Um, but for the G20, they've gone to a ZF Sax uh, damper. So there's a little ZF logo here on this sticker. Additionally, on the G21, um, they have this uh, mount, this bracket over here for mounting a damper. So when I looked on Real OEM, I saw that you could apply a uh, anti-vibration damper similar to one of the ones you would have on like an exhaust here. So um, obviously, I guess they felt we didn't really need it, but it's there for some models, I suppose. From our top view, these two struts really aren't too different. Uh, the G21 has a very large flange, which unfortunately, I'm really not sure why. If we take a look at the bump stops, uh, you can see that the G21 is way longer than the one that came with my F31. In fact, I believe this is the same bump stop um, that's used on the X1 right now. So if you have a base suspension G21 and you lower your car and need lower bump stops, well, it looks like you can just go grab F31s. So let's have a look at the control arms of the G20 suspension. Um, in the front, they're using a tension strut again, except this one looks a lot thicker than um, the F31, like it is quite, quite beefy. Um, at the uh, subframe to bushing interface, it looks like they're using the same bushing as the F30 X drive. So uh, on the F30 rear wheel drive models, one side of the bushing was longer than the other versus the X drive, like both were the same, uh, same amount of protrusion out of the arm on both sides. And this is just like the F30 X drive. Looking at the lower control arm or the wishbone as BMW calls it, once again we have a rubber bushing down there at the subframe interface. And then over here we have our end link and a sway bar and uh, unlike the F30 generation the rear wheel drive models um, for the G20 have a left and right end link instead of using like two left end links. Um, it's the same thing with the struts. The G20 generation has a specific left and right strut. They're not using two left struts for the rear wheel drive like they did with F30. Then we have the sway bar itself, which is uh, decently beefy. Uh, this one, according to, at least the arms, according to my calipers, were about 25.5 millimeters in diameter. Uh, if we look over in here, you can see once again the uh, uh, sway bar mounting point is above the subframe. Um, I'm not sure if uh, the bushings on it are permanently mounted or not, so I'll have to go to Real OEM later, double check, and see if those have a separate part number. If they don't, then it means they're probably permanently mounted and if you change the right height of this car with lowering springs or something then you're going to be inducing preload on your bar just like with the F30 generation. So here we are looking at the rear suspension and once again the lowermost arm down here that the spring uh, seats into is the camber arm so that bolt way in there is eccentric and uh, controls the camber and um, the rearmost arm of the multi-link suspension here uh, once again controls the toe so if we look uh, at its subframe mounting point then we have another eccentric uh, bolt or washer which controls the toe. BMW is once again using this uh, separate uh, shock absorber and spring setup for the rear so it's not a coilover se setup and the shock absorbers are also made by ZF for the rear of this base suspension car. Uh, one thing that is pretty different from the G20 uh, to the F30 
is the sway bar. Um, now this goes over this uh, top control arm of the multi-link suspension instead of going under it to mount here. So that might make uh, sway bar uh, swaps uh, a lot easier because that was one of the difficulties for the F30 generation is just trying to maneuver this arm when it's you know encapsulated inside of these multi-link arms. So now it's uh, above the arm, it clears it, so it should be a little bit easier, but you still have to drop the subframe. And if we zoom into the subframe there, once again, you can see the rear sway bar uh, bushing and mount. And uh, we can clearly see that the sway bar is allowed to freely rotate within this bushing, um, although the rubber may have some friction, you know, binding it a little bit. But otherwise, uh, there isn't a whole lot of preload like there were on the front F30 uh, sway bar bushings. And once again, on the driver's side, we have our rear headlight leveling sensor. So just like the F30 springs, the G20 springs are also using a two-letter code for the rear. And once again, the tag denotes uh, which orientation the spring goes in. So this one is spring BB, um, and uh, this says open or upper, so this is the top side of the spring. So here is the rear damper, and uh, it has this uh, cap on top, which you'll have to pull right off. This just pops right off. You'll notice that it has this little pin over here, which slots into a hole there. And underneath that uh, black cap, we have a 16 millimeter nut and a five millimeter hex counter hole. So the same as the F30. So now that the nut is off, we can take the top mount off as well as the bump stop assembly. So here are uh, some rear bump stops. On uh, this side over here, I have the bump stop from the G20-330i, and this is the bump stop that came with my F31 X-Drive. Um, the bump stop from my F31 is a little bit longer, maybe about a quarter inch or so, but both of them really feel like they have the same uh, spring rate. Uh, additionally, the, sp the cups that they slot into are the exact same, so it looks like they carried this over from the uh, F30 generation to G20. So one thing I noticed looking at these uh, G20 rear rotors is it looks like the ro rear rotors are directional versus the F30, which, uh, you know, you could swap it on either side. Um, additionally, it's nice that it has the minimum thickness stamping on there, which is something the F30 generation didn't have. And this is 18.4 uh, millimeters. I'll bet you it started at 20 millimeters. BMW likes to have a 1.6 millimeter uh, wear margin for their rotors. After seeing the markings on the rear rotors, I decided to look at the front rotors as well. And I didn't see any rotation indicators, but I did still see that minimum thickness indicator. Looking on real OEM, it looks like if you have the uh, base brakes with the 330 by 24 rotor and the floating single piston caliper, um, the rotors are not directional. However, if you have some of the upgraded front brake versions, such as the four piston fixed caliper with 348 by 36 uh, rotor, or the M Performance rotor, which is a 374 by uh, 36 and also a four piston fixed caliper, then those are directional. So compared to the F30 generation, where there were no directional rotors at all, uh, G20 has a fair amount of them, and hopefully this uh, improves cooling, and uh, we don't see things like, you know, calipers getting so hot that they change colors uh, after uh, doing HPD or track days.